Hey guys, welcome back to lesson three of your dog obedience trainer crash course. Today's lesson, we're going to be going over sequencing, um, touch and leave it. So I'm not going to get too in depth as, um, I'm not going to get too in depth as to why we actually use sequencing because I'm pretty sure that most people already know why is to keep your dog guessing and to confirm that they for sure, for sure know the cues that we're asking them. And by asking them to do things in a random order, it's going to solidify their understanding of those cues. So rather than insulting you guys with long explanations, I'm just going to show you guys a couple different sequences that you can do with your dogs to help solidify um, and just kind of give you some examples of what finished sequencing can look like. One thing that I want you guys to keep in mind when you're doing sequencing exercises with your dog is to do it with the ability of the dog in mind. Um, I'm going to be showing you my sequencing exercises using Hershey just because he loves to work, he's the youngest, and he's it's easiest for him to get up and down. Um, if I was going to be doing sequencing exercises with, say, Bruce, I'm probably not going to do too many asking him to, like, sit and lay down consistently, especially not on a tile floor like this where it's kind of slippery, just because he's getting a little bit older, his hips are getting a little bit worse, and it's harder for him to get up and down, up and down, up and down. So when I'm asking Bruce for sequencing exercises, it's going to look a lot different than when I'm asking Hershey for sequencing exercises. If you're not covering all of the obedience cues at one time while you're doing sequencing, that's not a big deal. Um, some people get into that mindset that you have to do every single cue every single time you're doing sequencing and that's just not the case. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you guys a couple really easy sequencing exercises with Hershey, um, starting from the really easy ones like puppy push-ups, all the way up to incorporating all of his cues at once. Um, I understand that there are some cues here that you guys haven't learned yet or we haven't gone over yet. Don't worry about that. I just want to be able to show you guys some different examples of sequencing. Um, and like I said, I'm going to go ahead and start with the puppy push-ups. So, if we're doing our puppy push-ups, we're just going to sequence them back and forth between the sit and down. So sit, down, sit, down, sit, down. Thank you. So as you can see there, even with as fast as Hershey is, he was starting to get a little bored with that. And when he saw my hand came out, come out, he actually wanted to touch it um, because that's a cue that I do with him pretty regularly. So now let's go ahead and let's add some more advanced ones in. Hershey, come. Sit. Down. Touch. Sit. Touch. Down. So in that one, I added a little bit of recall. I added in, in his touch. Um, and you could even see him after he did his last sit, he wanted to go down and then I gave him that touch. He got up, touched, and then I put him right back in the down. So another one, stay. Come. Sit. By me. Heel. Sit. Down. No, sit. Yes, there it is. Good boy. Good boy. So again, you could see him kind of work through those. He automatically wanted to go into the down just because it's a little bit easier with him on this slippery tile. Let's just do one more just so you can see. Is she with me? Sit. Down. Touch. Sit. Down. Behind. boy. So as you can see, once your dog solidly has their cues, it's very, very easy to tie them all together and ask them for a series of different things. Just sorry about that. Hershey bumped my table. But as you can see, um, Hershey cycled through pretty much all of the known basic obedience cues in a very short period of time. Sequencing is fun, um, it's exciting for your dog, and it makes them want to work for you because it's enjoyable. Um, additionally, it's not just the same thing over and over and over again, so it keeps it fresh for them. 
Um, while I was doing that, you might have heard me give him the touch command. This was a really fun command that we teach the dogs, um, and it it really has a lot to do with body positioning, right? Because if we need them over here, rather than grabbing their collar and pulling them just a few feet, we can just tell them touch and have them move over. So how I'm gonna teach a dog the touch cue is very similar uh, to how I'm gonna start my recall later on. So this is a really great way to do that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start by putting a treat in between my fingers like this. I want the dog to be able to smell the treat, but not actually be able to get to it. The reason for this is because when I'm teaching the touch cue, I'm gonna be luring them using my hand. And I like to use movement in my hand because dogs are attracted to movement. So all I'm gonna do is lure him using that hand. And then the second that his nose touches my hand, I'm gonna mark it and then give him the treat. So what it's gonna look like is a little bit like this. Yes, good. And reward. Yes, good boy. Leave it. Yes, good boy. Yes, good boy. Now, when we're teaching the touch cue, it's really important that the dog is not able to get the treat out of your hand until after you have marked the behavior of them actually touching their nose to your hand because that's what we want we want them to be moving to wherever our hand is at so that their body is being relocated then once we know that the dog is going to touch our hand we will go ahead and say touch right before they're able to make it to our hand that's going to look like this Hershey. touch yes good boy good boy Hershey. touch yes good boy Good touch. Touch. Yes. Good boy. Good boy. As you can see, touch is a pretty fun one. They get pretty excited about it. Hershey's nose or Hershey's tail is going the whole time. It's very exciting for him. Um, touch is also another good one to use. Maybe um, if your dog is struggling with their recall right at that time, sometimes dogs like the touch command um, better than they like the recall command so it's also a good one that you can use to throw in there otherwise i primarily use it just as a another thing that i can use to get my dog going get him moving and um, reposition his body if need be so the next thing we're going to work on is leave it and the leave it cue is going to be one of your best friends same with your clients so how i'm going to teach the leave it cue is pretty simple at first but what I'm going to do is again I'm going to put a treat in my hand and I'm gonna let the dog know that I have a treat in my hand and let them try to sniff at it the very instant that Hershey makes the decision on his own to leave my hand alone I'm going to mark and reward that behavior yes good boy so as you can see, he sniffed my hand a little bit, and then as soon as he chose to disengage, I marked and rewarded it. Yes, good boy. Yes, good boy. Another thing I want you to pay attention to while I'm doing this exercise is the fact that you never, ever, ever want to give the dog the treat that you're asking them to leave alone. The reason for this is when we tell our dogs to leave it, we want them to know that they are leaving it no matter what. Not just right then and then they can have it later. They need to leave it alone no matter what. If you get into the habit of asking your dog to leave it and then giving them that same treat from your hand, the only thing that you're teaching them is that I want you to leave it right now. And as long as you do, you're going to get it later. What you're going to see then is as you tell your dog to leave it, they're gonna leave it, and then when you go to tell them good, they're gonna immediately try to go after that treat or whatever it is that you're telling them to leave alone because that's what they have had happen in the past. So we wanna make sure that we are always rewarding them with the opposite hand. Now, we're gonna tie in our leave it cue once we've gotten confident that our dog is gonna go ahead and leave that treat alone once we have presented it. That will look like this, leave it, Yes, good boy, good boy. 
So as you can see, I presented him the treat, I told him to leave it, and then as soon as he disengaged from the treat and gave me eye contact, I went ahead and rewarded him for it. When we're gonna go ahead and start making our leave it cue a little bit more difficult, the very first thing that we're gonna do is rather than having our treat in a closed fist, or otherwise so the dog can't get it, we're gonna offer it to them with an open hand. Leave it. Yes. Leave it. Yes, good boy. Once we feel confident that we are able to offer our dog that treat with an open hand, give them that leave it, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna move the food treat onto the floor. Uh, the reason why it's really important to make sure that you're working this exercise on the floor as well is because nine times out of 10, whatever it is that you're asking your dog to leave alone is actually gonna be on the floor. It's one thing for us to ask them to leave something alone that's in our hand. It's a whole other thing to ask them to leave something alone that's on the floor. So let me move her sheet a little bit. Here she yeah. Okay, so once we have our dog com uh, comfortably leaving it, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and start offering it to him while it's on the ground. When I'm first offering a treat to my dog on the ground and asking them to leave it, I'm gonna make sure that I have my other hand in close proximity because if the dog goes for the treat after I tell him to leave it, I wanna make sure that I'm able to cover it back up so that he can't actually get to it. I'm still rewarding him from the opposite hand and honestly nothing else has changed besides the location of the treat. So what this is gonna look like is like this. Leave it, yes. Leave it, yes. So obviously Hershey has a pretty strong leave it. You can see that he is so uncomfortable sitting there around that tree that he just eventually gets up and walks away. He's like, you know what? Mom said that I need to leave it. I'm leaving it no matter what. And I'm gonna confirm that I leave it by going over there. Here she comes. Once we get our dog to the point where we are able to put the tree on the ground, tell them to leave it, and we know that they're gonna leave it, the next thing that we're gonna do is start working this exercise while I'm in the standing position and he is down close to the ground. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to mimic a situation where we might drop something that we don't want our dog to have. So what that's gonna look like is just like this. Leave it. Leave it. Yes. I know you don't like it when it's touching you, huh? Leave it. Leave it. Good boy. Good leave it. Thank you. All right. So as you can see, as you get your dog with a really strong leave it, eventually they will leave everything alone that you're throwing around them. Now, granted, like I said before, Hershey has a pretty strong leave it. Um, he worked all the way up through service dog training. He actually is a certified service dog. Say hi, Hershey. Um, so he, his training is pretty advanced. However, that should be the end goal with your leave it. You should be able to put your dog in a downstay and drop whatever you want around it and he's not gonna move. Um, I've also got, gone ahead and attached a couple links to some other videos that I have of me doing like leave it exercises and stim control exercises with Hershey. I would highly recommend you taking a look at them just so you can have some more ideas of exercises that you can do. Plus, you can make it really, really fun for you and your dog to keep working on it and really challenge your dog in that leave it. So. That concludes lesson three today. Again, we went over sequencing, we went over touch, and we went over leave it, all of which are fun exercises to do with your dog, and they have a bunch of different applications, so you can kind of get crazy with them. But I hope you learned something new. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you back for lesson four.